We will begin Mass this morning with hymn number 865, 865 from the hymn book. Can I invite you please to stand? Good morning. Welcome to our celebration of Mass. It's the second Sunday in ordinary time. Welcome if you join us online. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. You may have noticed that the second Sunday in ordinary time, every year, no matter which of the Synoptic Gospels, no matter which Matthew, Mark or Luke we're reading that year, and it's Matthew this year, second Sunday of Ordinary Time is always from the Gospel of St. John. There is a reason for that. In Matthew, Mark and Luke, the disciples are on a journey of discovery about who Jesus is. John's Gospel never has that journey from the very beginning. John affirms who Jesus is in a variety of titles and in a variety of ways and this year of course no exception and he uses the words of St John the Baptist so a little reprise from last weekend when we celebrated the epiphany and the baptism of the Lord a reprise of that and an invitation to see and to recognise the presence of the Lord that we may be encouraged and educated by the word of God to do so and that we might celebrate worthily in word and in sacrament we call to mind our sins and we ask God's pardon. I confess to Almighty God and to you my brothers and sisters that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words in what I have done and in what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, 
and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Kyrie eleison. Kyrie eleison. Christ eleison. Christ eleison. Kyrie eleison. Kyrie eleison. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, who govern all things, both in heaven and on earth, Mercifully hear the prayers of your people. Bestow your peace on our times. We make our prayer through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. The Lord said to me, You are my servant Israel, in whom I shall be glorified. I was honoured in the eyes of the Lord. My God was my strength. And now the Lord has spoken. He who formed me in the womb to be his servant, to bring Jacob back to him, to gather Israel to him. It is not enough for you to be my servant, to restore the tribes of Jacob and bring back the survivors of Israel. I will make you the light of the nations so that my salvation may reach to the ends of the earth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <coughs> Here I am, Lord, I come to do your will. Here I am, Lord, I come to do your will. I waited, I waited for the Lord, and he stooped down to me. He heard my cry. He put a new song into my mouth, praise of our God. Here I am, Lord, I come to do your will. You do not ask for sacrifice and offerings, but an open ear. You do not ask for holocaust and victim, instead here am I. Here I am, Lord, I come to do your will. In the scroll of the book it stands written that I should do your will. My God, I delight in your law, in the depth of my heart. Here I am, Lord, I come to do your will. Your justice I have proclaimed in the great assembly. 
my lips I have not sealed, you know it, O oh Lord. Here I am, Lord, I come to do your will. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. I, Paul, appointed by God to be an apostle, together with Brother Sosthenes, send greetings to the Church of God in Corinth, to the holy people of Jesus Christ, who are called to take their place among all the saints everywhere who pray to our Lord Jesus Christ. For he is their Lord, no less than ours. May God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ send you grace and peace. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand for the gospel. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Blessings on the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest heavens. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Seeing Jesus coming towards him, John the Baptist said, Look, there is the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. This is the one I spoke of when I said, A man is coming after me who ranks before me because he existed before me. I did not know him myself, and yet it was to reveal him to Israel that I came baptizing with water. John also declared, I saw the Spirit coming down on him from heaven like a dove and resting on him. I did not know him myself, but he who sent me to baptize with water had said to me, The man on whom you see the Spirit come down and rest is the one who is going to baptize with the Holy Spirit. Yes, I have seen and I am the witness that he is the chosen one of God. <clears throat> the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The trains seem to be on strike most days this week, so... Uh, to go up uh, to the direction of Glasgow, I, I, uh, I got the bus, um, always, always an education, um, and uh, I was uh, sitting in front of a guy and his pal, and uh, he was explaining, um, I think you would probably call it his philosophy of life, he was explaining his religious belief and practice and the things that motivated him, and uh, I was glad I was sitting in front of him because it meant he couldn't see my eyebrows. Uh, waggling up and down, which apparently mine do, um, uh, uh, and he was explaining what, what he believed and why, and uh, it was very interesting because he, he kind of permed two from five different religions, uh, he took a bit of Catholicism, a wee bit of Presbyterianism, a uh, touch of, of Baptist theology, sprinkling of Buddhism, uh, and uh, he, he was, seemed quite pleased with that system of belief, so, so be it. Uh, didn't really light my candle, but there you go. Uh, maybe I'm wired differently, uh, and, and I think differently, and uh, like yourselves, um, look to the Word of God, principally the Gospels, 
uh, seek to inform my life uh, by what God has revealed of himself, um, celebrate the sacraments uh, as, a, as a, a necessary nurture and nourishment for, for the Christian life and, and, and seek to live, as, as I'm called to live, uh, a, a Catholic philosophy, which I'm sure is reflected in the vast majority of your lives or another uh, Christian denomination um, within that broad family of, of the church. So uh, I, 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 it struck me that uh, there are not only lots of beliefs, but lots of websites explaining the beliefs. Uh, and, and I was reminded of the English man of letters, a guy called G.K. Chesterton. Uh, he was a prolific author and commentator. And he said, it's not that when people stop believing in God, they'll believe nothing. He said, it's that they'll believe anything. Uh, and uh, it certainly demonstrated to me on the bus between here and Brayhead, uh, this guy would certainly believe anything. Um, uh, uh, it, was, uh, it, it, was, it was interesting. Um, but what, what we would term cults, that, um, sort of broadly speaking, uh, a belief system that borrows from a variety of other belief systems, even if they're incompatible with one another, um, have always existed. And they've always existed alongside mainstream religion. Um, and because we are followers of Jesus, um, we tend to have that Christian idea quite dominant in our heads, um, and we see John the Baptist as, a, as an auxiliary figure um, to Christianity. Uh, interestingly enough, he had in his own right a series of believers. We, we know this also from the gospel because he had disciples that, that Jesus uh, went to Jesus to ask him if, if he was the one that, that they should be following rather than John the Baptist. And, and, and we know that also from another source because you may recall this because we do read it uh, it, 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 at Mass, um, when Paul, on his journey around the Mediterranean, gets to Ephesus, he finds a group of people who are devout followers of John the Baptist. And they, they, Paul asks them, who, who, who laid hands on you for you to receive the Holy Spirit? Because that was the job of, of the apostles and those they appointed to, to govern early churches uh, and to facilitate uh, the early Christian community. And they said, Holy Spirit, we've never even heard of the Holy Spirit. The baptism we received was the baptism of John. So they were, in a primitive sense, Baptists, not like modern Baptists, but um, they were followers of John the Baptist. They had no idea about Jesus, about his saving life, death, and resurrection, about the gift of the Holy Spirit. And Paul says to them, ah, he says, well, the baptism you received was only a baptism of repentance, not the baptism of the Holy Spirit, not the baptism that enables you to live your life with power and love and self-control. And I thought, isn't that a, a wonderful example of the difference between what we might have as a cult and what we might have as a, as a path of faith um, that allows us and enables us to live our lives as, as members of our community and as members of a society that actually contributes to that reality and builds people up, not just ourselves, but builds people up. And I, I thought... Isn't that, isn't that an interesting way of putting it? John's baptism was only a baptism of repentance. It was all about sin and forgiveness, um, or, or at least more accurately, sin and repentance. It was all about what we do in response to awareness of sin. And that's a wee bit negative. So when John the Baptist sees Jesus, and, and this is why it's here in the Gospel, to, to make sure that we move from being followers of the Baptist to followers of Jesus, Behold, he says, there's the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. The focus is not on my repentance, but on God's forgiveness. On God's forgiveness, freely given. I, I don't need to do anything to deserve it. I don't need to earn it. It's there. All I need to do is embrace it. And John goes on to say, I am his witness, just as we are called to be witnesses. As Paul said to the, uh, the church in Corinth, you are to take your place among the saints from all parts of the world who live and believe and pray to the Lord Jesus Christ. And I, I think if we, want, if we want to say at the beginning as we are of the church's liturgical year and the beginning of our own year, what about those virtues that Paul says marks those baptized and gifted with the Holy Spirit? Power and love and self-control. And notice how they balance one another, how two of them without the third, any two without the third, would limp a bit, but like my man on the bus, he had a series of beliefs that he permed from various religions. It limped. It wasn't, it wasn't a philosophy of life. It was a series of ideas that 
at different times in his life struck him as good. But if there's a wee system and it revolves around something bigger than ourselves, we do something extraordinary by being part of that and by reflecting it. So power and love and self-control. They are, they are to mark us who have received baptism of the Holy Spirit, not just the baptism of repentance, but who know the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. So the emphasis is not on our repentance, but on God's forgiveness. It's not about our awareness of sin, but it's on the free gift of God. Um, that's, that's our belief system. That's our gift. That's our joy. And that's the cause of our, our happiness and our ability to stand, to sit and to kneel before God together and to recognize that we all have something to offer, to offer to each other, but also to offer to our church and that church has something to offer us. A, a guide, an encouragement, a way of living, power, love and self-control. So for the ability to integrate those three virtues into our lives so that we are his witnesses as we are called to be for each other and ourselves, we pray today. To pray for our needs, we stand. Let us pray to God who guides all who seek him in faith. As you have called your chosen ones to be your witnesses, Give power to the church to witness faithfully. Since by grace we have known the true Messiah, may we make him known to others. As the first disciples followed Christ to his dwelling, so may his servants at this time come to him and rest with him. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Bless the people of this world with wisdom to know the Lord and the will to follow him. Holy Spirit, descending on him and abiding in him, enter into the dark places of the world to banish ignorance and reveal the Saviour who has come. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. As Andrew brought his brother to Christ, so may we bring to him those who are close to us, but do not yet know the fullness of his love. May he come into our homes and make them his own. May he, the great teacher, give light to all who teach and all who learn in this community. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Have mercy on those who seek rest and cannot find it. Give them hope in Christ, who calls the seekers to find their peace in him. Come to the lonely ones who have no one to walk with them and show them the way. May they find human friendship and divine love. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Grant eternal rest to those who have come at last to where Christ dwells in glory. As they have sought him and tried to serve him in this world, may they see him with full vision and abide in him forever. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. To these are general intercessions. We add prayer for our own particular and local needs. Let's pray for those who have asked us to remember them in prayer, especially those we know to be in particular need at this time. Pray for those who join us online, particularly if they are unwell or are caring for others, either in their own families or as their vocation in life. Lord, will bless and strengthen them for their kindness and generosity. Pray for ourselves and for each other, 
called to recognize the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world, that gift of forgiveness freely given that empowers us to live with love, with self-control, and with power ourselves. And we remember finally our dead. We pray particularly for those who have died recently, especially David McGivern, and those whose anniversaries occur about now, especially those we've been asked to remember in prayer. That they may all know the presence of God. Lord, hear us. God, our Father, you call us to be your people. You gift us with your Holy Spirit and with your constant gift of forgiveness. Remind us of this opportunity to be your witnesses. Give us courage to embrace it. Our prayer we make through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at our hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all this holy church. Grant us, Lord, we pray that we may participate worthily in these mysteries, for whenever the memorial of this sacrifice is celebrated, the work of our salvation is completed. Our prayer we make through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks and to raise to you a hymn of glory and praise, O God, Father of infinite goodness. For by the word of your Son's gospel, you have brought together one church from every people, tongue, and nation. And having filled her with life through the power of your Holy Spirit, you never cease through her to gather the whole human race into one. Manifesting the covenant of your love, the church dispenses without ceasing the blessed hope of your kingdom and shines bright as a sign of your faithfulness, which in Christ Jesus our Lord you promised would last for eternity. And so with all the powers of heaven we worship you constantly on earth, while together with the whole church, with one voice, we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, Oh. 
to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and who always walk with us on our journey of life. Blessed also your Son, present in our midst when we are gathered by his love. And when, as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father, most merciful, we ask you to send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing. He broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, save, save us, Savior of the world. For by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. Therefore, Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through suffering and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your own right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life, the chalice of blessing. Look with favour on the offering of your church in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ handed on to us, and grant that by the power of the spirit of your love we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. Lord, renew your church by the light of the gospel. Strengthen the bonds of unity between the faithful and the pastors of your people, together with Francis our Pope, John our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, so that in a world torn by strife, your holy people may shine forth as a prophetic sign of unity and concord. Remember our brothers and sisters fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us, when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever, there in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, the Apostles and Martyrs, St. Conville and all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Christ Jesus, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours for ever and ever. Amen. For the coming of God's kingdom, we pray as the Lord Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, 
and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, you who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your Let's offer each other a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Stand and pray. Pour out on us, O Lord, we pray, the spirit of your love, and in your kindness may those you have nourished with this one heavenly bread be one in mind and in heart. Our prayer we make through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Can I invite you to make yourself aware of the latest notices in all the usual ways? Um, we prayed particularly for the repose of the soul of David McGivern. His funeral will celebrate at 10 o'clock on Friday at our, our, our Mass. So please remember him and his family in your prayer. Um, the, just at this point to thank you, because over the past uh, month we've, we've not only uh, distributed 40 Christmas goodie bags and 150 Christmas dinners, but we've also uh, given 60 uh, welfare packages, bags with enough food to keep a family going for the best part of a week. Um, and to do that, we've used your donations plus £300 of, of the money that you've entrusted to me for that purpose. Um, we're just going to keep that service going because it's very valuable uh, to those in need. So we will be happy to accept any donations and anything you have, uh, tins, treats and toiletries, and we'll make up the bags um, and give them out. I've got accounts, uh, everything is inventoried and accounted for. If anyone wants to see them, they're very welcome. There will always be half a dozen bags in the porch at the side here. Um, so if you know anyone that wants one um, or anyone that would like one, please either take one or, um, give it to, uh, or ask them to pop down and get it. And we will just replace those six with others that we have made up elsewhere. So um, it's an extraordinarily powerful, helpful thing to do and is great credibility, I think, to our service of the gospel and of each other. Um, so we'll, we'll keep that going for as long as we can. You've been very generous, so I have money in the bank and you continue to give donations, so we will continue to do that just as long as it's required. So thank you for that. There's tea and coffee in the hall after Mass. You're all very welcome. Thanks if you joined us online. Thanks if you're, for being here. I uh, hope you have a nice day and a good week. We ask God's blessing. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Please join in with our final hymn, number 768. Number 768. Mountains are